I'm going to be sharing the specifics of what I look for in a kibble so that it's less of telling you what to do and more of helping you become an informed pet parent so you can make the best choice based on your dog's individual needs. Ooh, before I forget, yes, my favorite pet food brands and favorite products are linked in my description. There are six key things that I look for when picking a kibble brand. First on the list is the carb to protein percent ratio. I put this at the top of my list because it's the first thing I'm looking at. You simply pick up your bag of kibble, turn it around, look at the guaranteed analysis, you'll find percentages. You take the fat, the protein, the moisture, and the ash percentage is, you take those numbers, you add them up, subtract from 100, and that number is your estimated carbohydrates in that food. The reason I'm really bullish about knowing the carb percentage of my dog's food is because it's widely known that excessive carbohydrates, especially those that are full of low quality starchy ingredients like corn, can promote the production of sugar and absolutely lead to inflammation. And as we all know, inflammation is the root of most evil in the body and high level of carbs, just like in humans, can lead to obesity. Then I look at the protein amount and I want at least 28 to 30% or more of protein, but it's not just that percentage of protein that matters, it's the type of protein, which I'll talk about in a second. Probably something we are all trained to do is pick up that bag of kibble, turn around, and look at the ingredients, but there are a few things that I specifically look for. First off being species appropriate ingredients versus filler, unnecessary, cheap ingredients. Three really common and popular ingredients that I really try to avoid at high levels are going to be corn, vegetable oil, and soy. And that's because these are most commonly GMO or genetically modified, which is very often sprayed with pesticides like Roundup, for example, which is high in glyphosate. You've probably seen this all over the media. Cornell University actually did a study that showed that pet exposure to glyphosate, which again is very toxic, is four to 12 times more than humans. Legumes like peas, beans, or even lentils are ingredients I avoid in excess because kibble brands add this to their food to inflate the protein percent. But as we all know, our dogs are carnivores. They need their protein from meat sources. Ultimately, ingredients like legumes or peas used in excess are added to kibble as a protein alternative, not necessarily because they add a ton of nutritional value, and they're added to pad the margins of these big kibble corporations. Okay, these two cuddling over here, but more ingredients that I avoid at all costs are gonna be flavorings like natural flavorings in the ingredient deck or poultry flavoring, generic fat. Sometimes you'll see ingredients that say animal fat or just a generic fat. I prefer when they specify what that fat is so I can verify the quality of it. Dyes, wheat, wheat flour, gluten, wheat gluten, sorghum, because these ingredients are used in most scenarios as cheap, inexpensive fillers, salt divider. This is a tricky, misleading marketing tactic that can be really confusing for pet parents, but not for you because I'm gonna explain that according to AFCO, a bag of kibble can only have 1% salt, which means anything after salt is less than 1% of the food, which unfortunately is misleading because oftentimes if you look at the front panel of your dog's food, you often see really healthy ingredients like spinach or kale or blueberries or apples, and those fresh foods could take up a big portion of the front panel of the food, making you believe that there's a lot of that in the food, when in reality, when you look at the ingredients, that isn't always the case. Now, before I talk about ingredient splitting, which is something that is just very frustrating for me, as well as sourcing, I do wanna take a moment just to remind us that pet food can seem super heavy, stressful, and frustrating. But let's just take a minute to have fun with some toys and the boys, because look what we just got in the mail. We got the Bark Box and Super Chewer. I always like to do unboxing boxing on the videos because y'all always ask, like, what is the theme? This is a monthly toy subscription box that is custom to your dog's size and chewing needs. The first one being Super Chewer, and this month's theme, which is pretty crazy, if Finn would, Finn again, can you sit? Yes, is another, oh, Star Wars. I'm super excited about this one, and I really love the Super Chewer box because, look at this, they come with more durable toys meant for dogs that might be a little bit more tough on the toys, and they often come with these two-in-one toys. So as you can see here, it's called Chew Are My Only Hope. 
And inside of here is a durable rubber ball if they're able to uh, uh, tear this part off. Next we have Barf Box, which is the more traditional plush toys. Um, these all come with a different theme every month. And best part, because I have been a long-term customer of BarkBox and Super Chewer, they are sponsoring this part of the video and giving you a double toy offer. It's linked in the description below. I'm just so grateful that they're supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs. And look at this one, it's probably my favorite. They have so much fun with it. And a simple fun brain game you can do is take your dog's BarkBox that comes in the mail, sprinkle their kibble or some of their favorite treats down on the bottom, and then put the toy Toys on top and have your dog dig, sniff, and forage it out for mental stimulation. It's just a fun, easy way to interact with your dog. I always supervise, of course. It gives me something fun to look forward to in, as a way to interact with my dog. And two, they often come with some sort of treat dispensing or enrichment toy. For example, this one, yes, is if you take the little head or cap off, look how cute that is, you can fill this part with some treats or some of your dog's kibble and put it back on and then they have a little bit of a brain game puzzle toy where they have to get this off to get access to the treats. Again, mental stimulation or enrichment is twice as tiring to a dog than physical exercise alone. Ingredient splitting is where a brand will take one low quality starchy filler ingredient typically and they'll break it up into two to three maybe even four different sub ingredients that are all really the same thing to make it look like it's lower on the ingredient depth because as we all know the higher the ingredient on the list of ingredients the more of it is in the food. Pet parents are becoming smarter like you, especially when you click that subscribe button down below. Sorry, I had to. And we don't want to see corn or soy or other low quality ingredients as like the second or third one on the list. So brands will take things like pea and they'll break it up between pea protein, pea flour, pea fiber, and pea starch, which is really all the same thing so that individually they weigh lower so that they're lower on the ingredient list. But if you were to take all of those sub ingredients and combine them into what they really are, which is in this case, peas, they're gonna move much higher in the ingredient list, which is going to be a lot more alarming for many pet parents. Another example is corn. They'll break this up into many sub ingredients, such as corn meal, corn starch, corn flour, corn gluten, corn gluten meal. Also on the ingredient panel, I look for synthetic vitamins. This is when you see a series of words, oftentimes ones you don't quite understand or don't look like common words and numbers. And these are what we call synthetic vitamins or synthetic vitamin packs. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you know I'm not the biggest fan of these. Now, there are a time and place. There is no end-all, be-all rule with these, but generally speaking, if I could pick a dog food that has as minimal or no vitamin synthetics or synthetic packs, I would be happy. And the reason is, is regulation of these synthetic packs is a little challenging, especially because many times these synthetic vitamins come from multiple sources, sometimes all over different parts of the world, and all it takes is for one person or one manufacturer to miscalculate or misregulate this vitamin pack that goes into your pet's food, and then your dog accidentally could eat a toxic amount or upper level amount of a certain vitamin or synthetic amount. Vitamin D is a very common one that happened not that long ago. So anytime my dogs can get their micro and macro nutrients from whole food sources, that's really what I like to prioritize. The same with myself. And yes, many of you, hi Bobby, ask what my background is in and my degree and training is in nutrition science, albeit in humans, but the synergies and similarities between dog and human DNA is undeniable. But at the end of the day, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm simply your dog mom muse, here to inspire you to ask more questions, to research more and make the best decision for for your dog. Now let's talk about sourcing because I know you're just like me. Not only do you want the healthiest food for your dogs, but you want to support ethical and sustainable farming practices in your purchases. And so I'm always making sure that I am personally reaching out directly to the brands. Again, my favorite ones are all linked below and ensuring that they're supporting sustainable, humane, and ethical 
ethical farming practices. In addition to that, I wanna make sure that my brands are using human grade ingredients, meaning ingredients that are sufficient enough for us to eat, not 4D rendered, low quality diseased animals because many brands, even some of the most popular ones, will unfortunately source some or all of their meat from diseased animals, carcasses, and essentially feed grade animals that are not even deemed safe enough for you and I to consume. On a similar note as sourcing is their alignment. And that might sound a little floofy, but for me, I wanna work with a brand who is really pet focused, not just profit focused. In fact, that's how I choose any of the treats, shoes, toys, beds, whatever I get for my dogs. I have actually connected with either the founder, the owner, or at least a key decision maker at the brand directly. It's where I spend a lot of my time asking those diff difficult questions. And it's very clear to me the quality difference in a product or a food or treat from a brand that is truly in it for the benefit and the health of pets versus those that are just trying to make a quick buck. And then I focus on one of the more important things, which is affordability and accessibility. Because at the end of the day, if this food, food A, is the best food in all the land, but you can't afford to feed yourself or your family if you were to feed this to your dog and you can't find it anywhere near you, so you have to drive 10 hours north to go get it, that's not feasible. But at the end of the day, you should never ever feel bad about the food that you give your dog because I know that you're doing the best that you can. But as an informed pet parent, we should always strive to know what's in the food and understand how it's manufactured. That's why I make these videos so that you can understand what you're looking at when you're picking a dog food and then you can make the best decision based on your dog's individual needs, working with a nutritionist and a veterinarian so that you can do the most important thing, which is spend more time with your dog so you're not fretting and stressing and wasting a ton of time researching all the information that I can just kind of hand deliver to you. And no matter what you feed, the best part is if you're feeling a little down and out about not being able to feed one brand over another brand or one food category over another food category, there is always an easy and accessible, affordable way to boost your dog's bowl, meaning adding more life to the bowl so that your dog has access to more fresh foods. Because interesting fact, if you take your dog's bowl of kibble and you remove 20% of it, regardless of the brand, but you remove 20% and replace that amount with real fresh food options, maybe some lightly steamed broccoli, maybe some fresh organic apple, maybe some minced, ch finely chopped uh, Brussels sprouts, you can reduce your dog's chance of getting bladder cancer by up to 90% because just a little bit of fresh food can go a long way in helping our dogs be as healthy as long as possible. So if you want to learn more about healthy kibble toppers that I love adding on bowls, click the video right here. And if you want to learn more about the brands that I specifically love, you can click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful